From around the world they came, some for whom John Lennon's music was the soundtrack of their adolescence, some who were born years after Lennon's voice was silenced. All together at Strawberry Fields in Manhattan's Central Park to celebrate a man who still matters 30 years after his death. I remember him as a, as a maverick, as a rebel. <laughs> In Liverpool, Lennon's birthplace, his first wife Cynthia and their son Julian celebrated Lennon's life with an 18-foot sculpture called Peace and Harmony. To honor dad and to pray for peace. Near Reykjavik, Iceland, Lennon's widow Yoko Ono and Beatles drummer Ringo Starr honored Lennon's birthday with the lighting of a tower that Ono created. It's called Imagine Peace. Ono said Lennon would be fighting for it still. I don't think that he would have retired. He's not the retiring type. <laughs> but Lennon remains the type that merchandisers can only dream of. All of his solo albums have been remastered and re-released. A new documentary chronicles his years in New York. And a new film, Nowhere Boy, reimagines the young John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and the birth of the Beatles. If we're going to do this, we should write our own stuff. I write stuff. Lennon's stuff, says a music editor, is timeless. And this was somebody who, from a very young age, was writing songs like Help and In My Life and I'm a Loser. Alan Light of Rolling Stone magazine brought his seven-year-old son to Central Park Saturday to remember Lennon. Light says Lennon achieved immortality by showing how mortal he was. I think what people still respond to is the honesty and the, the combination of confidence and vulnerability. Songs by a young man who will never grow old. Imagine. Tony Guida, CBS News, New York.